Before setting up for audio recording, I want to go over the relevant aspects of the main edit window in Pro Tools, where all recording and editing tasks are carried out. I'm assuming at least a little familiarity with Pro Tools' overall layout, the two main windows, mix and edit, and basic navigation, so I'm just going to do a brief overview of the edit window itself, the toolbar, and the time base rulers, and a few relevant menus. There are three main areas in the edit window. At the top is the toolbar. Just below that is the strip of time base rulers. And of course, there's the main work area, the track lanes, where audio recordings are displayed, recorded, and edited in regions, referred to as clips in Pro Tools speak. The toolbar contains all the editing tools, mode options, and various settings for recording and working with audio clips, as well as the time and bar and beat displays and transport controls. Not all of these elements may always be visible, and the particular arrangement can be changed by dragging them around, but what you see here is pretty much the default display. If you don't see a certain section, the small mini menu at the upper right provides options to customize the toolbar's appearance. Going from left to right, here are the toolbar components. You've got the four editing modes, which govern behavior when moving and editing clips. Naturally, I'll cover these in detail later in the course. A set of navigation buttons lets you zoom horizontally and vertically as an alternative to zooming with the handles or the mouse. You can also preset your own zoom levels. In the main tools area, you have access to all the tools you'll be using for audio editing, which, again, I'll cover in detail in later videos. Below that, among various settings, are several key buttons that govern selections and the behavior of the transport. I'll explain in detail when we get to audio editing. The main display shows the current location in either bars and beats or real time, minutes and seconds. You can choose either as the main time base ruler and choose to have both displayed as well. Other displays show the current position of the cursor and the settings of the current audio clip selection, start time, end time, and duration. All of these can be manually edited by dragging or typing. A grid selector lets you set a value, again in bars and beats or real time, for audio clips to snap to when dragged in time in the relevant mode. The nudge selector does the same in much smaller increments of time, typically something like milliseconds, when you want to very slightly move the position of an audio clip in time with the nudge commands, the plus and minus numerical keypad keys. To the right are all the usual transport controls. If you enable the expanded transport option, you'll also see the pre-roll and post-roll settings. I'll cover those when I go over punch-in recording. Keep in mind, there's also a separate transport window you can call up, if that would be more convenient. Finally, there are options for enabling and setting up a metronome click for music recordings. Again, I'll go over those as part of recording setup. As far as menus, I just want to touch on a few that relate to working in the edit window. Under the File menu, besides the usual commands for opening and saving sessions and bouncing when a mix is completed, there are options for importing audio, which we'll look at after I go through recording. Most of the commands in the Edit menu would more likely be things you do via tools with the mouse or shortcuts. The View menu lets you customize certain aspects of the edit window, including optionally showing some sections of the mixer in track lanes for convenience, and what information you do or don't want to see within the clips themselves, like clip names and clip gain indicators. There's also an optional Universe view. This shows the entire length and height of the session, which can be helpful when navigating longer sessions, cutting down on the need to zoom and scroll frequently. Since I'll only be showing shorter sections, I'll leave it off. The Options menu includes several commands and settings that relate to recording and editing audio. We'll see most of the relevant ones as I go through those topics, but here are a couple of additional items. You can enable or disable the automatic scrolling behavior in playback, and you can set the solo mode for when you may need to solo individual tracks. It can be set to either Latching, which lets you solo multiple tracks, or XOR mode, the default, which exclusively solos only one track at a time. I'll continue with this overview of the edit window in the next video with the rulers and track lanes.